Hello, this is Crystal Stanich, and thank you for joining me for this week's First Chapter Friday. Today, I will be reading from the beginning of Kate Quinn's The Rose Code. Prologue. November 8, 1947, London. The Enigma arrived in the afternoon post, sealed, smudged, and devastating. Osla Kindle stood, 26 years old, dark-haired, dimpled, and scowling, in the middle of a tiny Knightsbridge flat that looked as if it had been bombed by junkers. Wearing nothing but a French lace slip and a foul mood as she looked at the piles of silk and satin exploding over every surface. Twelve days until the wedding of the century, this running's tattler had gushed. Oslo worked for the tattler. She'd had to write the whole ghastly column. What are you going to wear? Oslo picked up a rose satin gown, whirled with crystal beading. What about you? She asked it. Do you say I look simply smashing and I couldn't care less that he's marrying someone else? Etiquette lessons at finishing school never touched that one. Whatever the dress, everyone in the congregation would know that before the bride came along, Osla and the bridegroom were a knock sounded. Osla flung on a robe to answer it. Her flat was tiny all she could afford on her tattler salary if she wanted to live alone and be close to the center of things. Darling, no maid, no doorman, her mother had been appalled. Move in with me until you find a husband. You don't need a job. But after sharing bedrooms with billet mates all through the war, Oslo would have lived in a boot cupboard as long as she could call it her own. Hosts come, Miss Kindle. The landlady's spotty daughter greeted her at the door, eyes going at once to the rose gown slung over Osla's arm. Ooh, are you wearing that to the royal wedding? You look scrummy in pink. It's not enough to look scrummy, Osla thought, taking her bundle of letters. I want to outshine a princess, an actual born-to-the-tiara princess. And the fact is, I can't. Stop that, she told herself as soon as she'd shut the door on the landlady's daughter. Do not fall in the dismals, Osla Kindle. All over Britain, women were planning what they'd wear for the most festive occasion since VE Day. Londoners would queue for hours to see the flower-decked wedding carriages roll past. And Osla had an invitation to Westminster Abbey itself. If she wasn't grateful for that, She'd be just like those ghastly Mayfair moaners, blithering on about how tiresome it was attending the social event of the century. What a bother getting the diamonds out of the bank. Oh, woe is me to be so tediously privileged. It'll be topping, Osla said through gritted teeth, coming back to her bedroom and chucking the rose dress over a lamp. Simply topping. Seeing London swanning about in banners and confetti, wedding fever whisking away November chill and post war gloom, the fairy tale union of Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary and her handsome Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten, formerly Prince Philip of Greece, would mark the dawn of a new age. Hopefully, one where ration laws were finally swatted down and you could slather all the butter you wanted on your scones. Osla was all in favor of ushering this new era in with a slap up celebration. After all, she'd achieved her own fairy tale ending by any woman's standards. An honorable term of service during the war, even if she could never, ever talk about it. A flat in Knightsbridge paid for her by her own salary. A wardrobe crammed with gowns all in the latest go. A job writing entertaining fluff for the tattler and a fiancé who had put a sparkling emerald on her finger. Don't forget him. No, Osla Kindle had no excuse to get in a blue funk. All the business with Philip had been years ago, after all. But 
if she could have cooked up an excuse to get out of London, found some way to be geographically elsewhere, the Sahara Desert, the wastes of the North Pole, anywhere. During the moment, Philip bit his golden head and made his vows to England's future queen, Oslo would have taken it in a jiff. And if you would like to know what happens next, you can read this on the Libby app. Please join me here next week as I read The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Thank you so much and have a great week.